proceed, we need to understand what are claims so that you are able to see what is claims based uh, authorization or claims based access control. So for for ASP.NET Core, you must actually understand these three key terms, claim, claim identity, and claims are principle. So we have these three terms, claims, uh, claims identity, and claims are principle. So in ASP.NET Core, ASP.NET uses claims-based authentication. So when we talk about these claims-based authentication, then we must understand what is claim identity, what is a claim, what is a user when you come to sp.net core applications and also we must understand what is claims principle. So these four terms are very important when it comes to claims based authentication or claims based access or control. So the first thing that you need to understand is what is a claim. So some of you guys may be wondering what is a claim. So we have been talking about claims based uh, authorization. So a claim is a piece of information about the user. And most of other people usually define it as a name value pair that represents what the subject is or what the subject can do. It is actually a piece of information about the user and not what the user can do or what the user cannot do. So remember, this is actually a piece of information. It doesn't represent what the user can do or what the user cannot do. So claims are user data and they are issued by trusted source. So they are completely different from roles. So I need you to understand that, guys. So the claims are completely different from roles. So a claim can be anything, for example, a name, email address, phone number, age, gender. So that is what we usually call claims. So a claims can be an email address. So and you can see from our definition, it is actually a name value pair. So you give the name and the value. You can see that my, my claim is email and the value is test at gmail.com. My value is username. And the, my, my, I mean the name is username and the value is admin. The age, the name is age and the value is 20. Gender is the name and the value is male. So these ones are now what we are calling claims. And as you can see, it is actually a piece of information about the user. So all these are actually are claims. So some of you may be wondering, what about like the first name of a, of a person? So first name is actually an information about a user. So first name is also a claim. So if you are having like, so the, 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 the value, the name value pair will be first name, then you give it the uh, value, which can be John. Then gender, you can say gender, then the value will be male. So we have phone number, then the value will be the phone number of the user. Then we have the username, which will be like, for our example, username, then admin. Then we have age and the value will be 20. Then email address and the value will be test at gmail.com. Then we have country. So our, our claim will be country. The value will be, you give the country where you are. Then height can be a claim. Height will be the name and the value will be like maybe seven. Then Something to note now, as you have just seen, we have said that claims are completely different from roles. But there is something interesting. In sp.net code, a role is just a claim with type role. So a role is a claim with a type role. So claims are policy based. Since a role is also a claim of type role, we can also use a role with the new policy syntax. So we'll be able to see this when we explain more, but I don't, do, I don't want you guys to get confused about roles for now. I'm just mentioning that a role is just a claim with type role. That means a role is actually a claim. So as you can see in our list, you are now providing a role as a type of 
clean. So you will provide the role as the name and you give the value as the role of that user. So role will be the uh, name of the clean and the value of the role will be now the role for like the admin will be the value of that role. So that is now a clean. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing as we uh, uh, proceed. So the next term that you need to understand is what we are saying a claim claims identity. So we have been able to define a claim as a piece of information about the user. So what is a claim identity? So a claim identity is a collection of claims. So guys, I need you to understand that a claim identity is a collection of claims. And, and as we have just said, a, a claim, claim is a piece of information about the user. So you can think of a claim identity as a collection of information about the user. So when we say claim identity, some of you may be wondering, what is this collection of claims? So think of a claim identity as a national ID card. So a national ID card, for those who, whose countries they usually have like an, an ID, a national ID card, you will find that national ID card will have something like first name, last name, middle name, date of birth. Those first name, last name, date of birth is actually claims. So the national ID card holding a collection of claims is what we are calling claim identity. So this clay national ID card is now a type of claims identity because it has a collection of claims. That is the first name, last name, middle name, age of uh, date of birth, and some of the, maybe the ID number. So another thing could be the passport. So passport is one, is an example of claims identity. So as you think of a passport, it has your first name, last name, and even middle name. And it, all, it can also have the date of birth, your email address. So those email address, date of birth, first name, last name, those are claims. But passport has a collection of these claims. So our passport will be claims identity. So another thing could be the driving license. Your driving license could be having first name, last name, date of birth. These information are actually claims. So a collection of this information is being handled by the driving license. So the driving license is a claims identity. So all these types of claims identity at the bottom there, another thing is the credit card. Your credit card has information about you. It has a piece of information about you. That is the first name, last name. It has your credit card number. It has your uh, some of the account number. So those information is actually a collection of claims. So all these are, are now examples of claims identity. And all these are actually has the same uh, information about a user. Another claim identity type is the Google account, your Google account. Somebody can get your email address, your, your first name and your last name. So those information that your Google account has are claims. So this Google account is now a claims identity, meaning it is a collection of claims. So these are some of the examples of uh, claims identity. So all these has some information about you. So these, all these are now what we are calling claims identities. So all this information has the first name, it has the middle name, it has the last name, some has the email address, some has the date of birth. So all these first name, middle name, last name, email address, date of birth are all claims. So you can see the credit card, driving license, national ID card, passport, Google account are claims identities. These claims identities, each of them is a collection of claims.
So you can see like the driving license, it can have the first name, middle name, and the last name. The national ID card, it can have the first name, middle name, last name. Your passport can have the first name, middle name, last name, date of birth. Your Google account can have the first name, middle name, last name, and the email address. So those are claims. So those are now a collection of claims. So guys, I think you have now understood what are claims identity. So the next thing that you need to understand is the claims principle. So what is the claims principle or principle or identity when it comes to sp.net core? Some of you might, might have come across the terms claims principle, principle or identity in sp.net core. So when you talk of a claim principle, a claim principle contains a collection of claims identity. So claim principle contains a collection of claims identity. We have, we have actually seen what are claims identity. So we say first name is actually one type of, uh, is actually a type of claim. We have also seen the middle name is that is actually a claim. We have also seen last name can be a claim, email address can be a claim, and date of birth can be a claim. And we have seen that all these are claims. We have also seen claims identity. And we have said claims identity is a collection of claims. So meaning it has the first name, middle name, last name, email address, and date of birth. So all these claims at the bottom makes the claims identity. And we have also seen some of the examples of claims identity, like the driving license, which it has some of, of the claims. We have also seen the national ID card, which it has the, some of the claims. We have also seen the passport, which it has some of the claims. So all these we have said are claims identities. So what a claim principle now means is a is, is a collection of claims identity. So all the driving license, national ID card, and, and the passport, when you combine this list, it makes a claims principle. So it now makes a claims principle. And what is this claims principle? That is the user. So a user is contains a collection of claims identity, meaning me and you, can be having the driving license, me and you can be having the passport, me and you can be having the national ID card. So a user is now who we refer to as claim principle. So a user is the claim principle. So a user can have more than one claims identity. For example, you can have both the driving license and the passport. So a driving license is a claims identity with claims like first name, last name, date of birth, and the DL number. A passport is another claims identity, which it has claims like first name, last name, address, and the passport. So both identifies the same user. That means the claims principle. So the passport, your passport, your driving license, it has information about you. That means those your passport, driving license, being the claim identities can be used to identify the same, same person who is the claims principal. So the claim principal is actually the user. So this is the explanation, guys, about claims uh, principal. So all this information now is this is how it, 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 it looks like. So we have all the claims, a claims is actually a piece of information about the user, then these claims, a collection of these claims makes claims identity, where we have given the examples as the driving license, national ID card, and the passport. All this information, the driving license, passport, and the national ID card identifies a specific person who is you and me. That means your name, your first name, and the middle name, and the last name in your passport will be the same person or with the same information being uh, will be the same information in your driving license and it will be the same information in your national ID card. 
So all this information can be used to identify a user who is a claim principle. So that is it, guys. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. 